Hi, everyone. Looks like uh, more people are coming in. More people. Lots and lots of people still have a couple more left. Hopefully they'll show up in a second. Yeah, get another one. We had some problems with Zoom this morning, so I won't sure. Uh, whether it's even gonna work, but luckily it looks like we made it here. Let's see, Emma, is it Paula Burdett? And Jacob Kennedy and John Mitchell, Jamie It's, Silvery. it's Jennifer. Um, my brother was borrowing my uh, computer. We were having phone calls. Yes. My brother in early class was having trouble, so we thought it was his computer, so he switched out. So it's, it had my brother's name. Gotcha. I was going to tell you guys, some of these videos are going to make it onto my YouTube channel. So if y'all want to, you can just put your first name. Uh, what I'm going to get you to do for is uh, – got more people coming in. Uh, what I'm going to get you to do for is roll each day is probably towards the end of class. I'll get you all to text me, and then I'll have it all listed in the uh, in a chat because basically at the end of each Zoom meeting, I get this file with all the – uh, text messages we have back and forth. So I'll get you all to do that every day at class at the end. And I'll use that as my role. The role doesn't matter that much. I don't like take off points or anything for you missing classes, but it matters in the sense that I have to have track of, uh, keep track of when your last attendance was and all that stuff. Uh, like if anybody actually failed or had to withdraw or something like that, I'd have to have that last date. The good news is, uh, People generally don't fail my classes, even this one. Uh, maybe one out of 50 students will fail, and them, it's either they had a real big problem, uh, just couldn't handle the vector stuff, or two, they just couldn't make it to class enough. And so it's uh, almost always doable. Uh, I, I teach a high level calculus based physics class, but it uh, it's very doable because I bend over backwards to try to make sure everybody understands all the complexities of the course and all the mathematics and stuff like that. I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started. It looks like we got 26 people and I think that's what the uh, role was supposed to have. So I'm Billy Unger. I teach physics and astronomy here at TCC. I've been teaching here for uh, 13, no, excuse me, for eight years. Uh, I've been teaching the course, uh, our courses in math, phys physics, and astronomy for about uh, 24 years. So I've been around a while. I'm old, so very old. Uh, so I'll put it back on speaker view instead of everybody view. So uh, this course, oh, I got another one coming in. Maybe the number's bigger than 26. So uh, this is a calculus-based physics course. We will be doing calculus. Uh, literally, you can do it the first day, okay? Uh, the vast majority of the initial stuff is derivatives, but we will get into integrals. Uh, we'll use techniques of integration, all sorts of cool stuff. Of course, if you have a, a handy integral table, you can use that as well. Uh, but I really try to get you guys to not lean too much on the integral tables and instead, you know, learn the techniques that you learn supposedly in, in Calc 1 and 2. So, uh, we don't do too terribly much uh, uh, calculus, but when we do, we do some pretty robust stuff. But like I said, I'll, I'll show you all that. Uh, I'm planning on having a Zoom meeting at 11 uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for lecture. I will have a separate uh, Canvas page for our lab. And that, uh, well, here's something, here's the first question I need to ask you guys. So our class runs from 11 to 12, then there's a one hour break 
uh, from uh, 12 to 1, and then our lab runs from 1 to 350 on Wednesdays. Uh, sometimes students would much rather get their uh, stuff done earlier and they don't want that break. Uh, if that's something you are interested in, I have to have 100% buy-in. So uh, everyone has to want to skip that break on Wednesdays or uh, we don't get to it all. And that's, that's perfectly fair. That's the way it should be because you signed up for a class that goes from 11 to 12 and then from 1 to 350. Uh, but like I said, I am willing to go straight back to back on Wednesday uh, if y'all would like to save an hour of your day. Uh, but some people want to actually, uh, you know, take a break and eat, but I, and yeah, I don't mind you eating in, in Zoom meetings, of course, and we're not going to be handling any actual equipment. So there's no danger of you getting poisoned or anything. Uh, the, sometimes we'll do labs that are equipment related, uh, in which case we'll have filmed it and then give you the data. Other times we're going to use simulation software. So there's no danger to you having a drink and food other than you knocking it over and on, on your brother's computer. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, if y'all want to on your names from there on out, because like I said, these videos will go on uh, YouTube. If you have a problem with this first one going up there, just let me know and I'll make sure I scrub your name off of it. Uh, but I do put it on my YouTube channel. So from now on, you might want to change whatever you change in your Zoom setting to just your uh, two initials if you want to, or you just your first name, that would be great because uh, I'm horrible with names and I feel like I got superpowers when I can see, oh, look, it's Jennifer right there. Uh, cause, <laughs> and there's Emma. All right. Yeah. Oh, 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 who's William? Oh, that, that's me. So <laughs> anyways, I am a bit goofy, as you can probably tell already. I make a lot of jokes. Uh, I wear a lot of Despicable Me and uh, Minion stuff. I uh, also like cats. So there will be, you know, cool cat shirts with laser beams shooting out of their eyes and cool stuff like that. And I have a little Chihuahua, his name's Hercules. He will bother us from time to time. Never thought I'd have a, a Chihuahua, but oh my God, the little booger's sweet. So anyways, uh, we'll we get to meet the Chihuahua. What's that? We get to meet the Chihuahua. Yes, you will. <laughs> Hercules, his name's Hercules. Hi, it's adorable. I love how big his <laughs> eyes are in his head. <laughs> He's my buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, never, ever, ever thought I'd own a, uh, 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 excuse me, a chihuahua. My wife and I said we were going to get a dog, and we said, well, we're not getting a chihuahua, and we're not getting it from a, from a uh, pet store. Two days later, we found him at a pet store, and now we have him. So, <laughs> anyways. His name is Hercules Fenrir Younger. So I tried to get all the cool demigods and stuff in there. So as far as the semester goes, uh, we are using uh, Gian Coley's calculus-based physics text, uh, specifically the one with modern physics, because we don't offer the three-semester sequence in the Virginia Community College system. So uh, we still think it's important that you have exposure to that. So we actually cover a little bit of special relativity in the first semester, which is 241. Uh, in 242, we do electricity and magnetism, but we also try to get into uh, quantum mechanics, nuclear physics, and if uh, I have time, I even get into cosmology. A lot of it just turns out to be a, a lecture uh, that maybe I might even not test you on, but give you just my homework assignments on stuff like that. I'm trying to revamp the way I do my course. I'm not really sure. Uh, right now I have a syllabus I'm getting ready to go over, but there's some things on there I'm probably going to change. Like the way I had it set up before is I take all the homework assignments I've made and every homework assignment, I look at the national average, how long it takes to solve that particular problem. And I give you that many points. So if a problem takes 12 minutes to solve, it's worth 12 points. And the rule of thumb has always been that you're supposed to spend one hour for every hour of lecture. So basically, if you want a perfect 100, you need to spend 3,000 minutes in the semester uh, doing homework. And that's what I would grade the homework out of, which meant you needed about 187 points, 187.5 points per week. I might not do that this time this, uh, this semester, even though I did have several students that uh, went to like 4,500 points. Uh, of course, they had A's anyway, so I don't know. Uh, I guess they were just getting practice because they really wanted to be scientists or whatever. So that part might change a little bit, but other than that, I, I will pull up the syllabus in a second and show you that. Uh, before we do all that, does anyone have a question? I saw I got something on the chat here. 
Oh yeah, it's, I forgot to mention, there is a section of lab on Friday. So uh, that might be handled quite differently. Uh, it, a guy by the name of John Polito handles that, but I'll teach the Wednesday lab. And like I said, I'm offering to start right up at 12. I'm sure John, uh, uh, I'm sure John's not gonna be interested in doing that, but he might, who knows. Uh, he, he might have something going on that might make his life easier if y'all started earlier, but I doubt it. Uh, so anyways, y'all can take that up with him. But like I said, if, uh, if anyone, anyone, anyone has any problems with us doing the lab back to back, uh, on, uh, Wednesday, I mean, as soon as I finish the zoom meeting for lecture, we go straight into lab. If any of y'all have a problem with that, uh, please email me because I won't do it at all. So, uh, Someone says I don't have anything for Canvas for this class yet. I literally just turned it on uh, for this class. I haven't turned it on for the lecture yet, though. So I mean, for the lab yet, though. So you'll you'll see that it might be something where you need to uh, back out of Canvas and then log back in or empty your cache or something like that. So uh, let me get started. I'm going to go ahead and go over our syllabus, or at least a version of the syllabus that's going to slightly change by the end of the day. Uh, so I'm going to go to share my screen and I'm going to choose that screen and here we go. So this is the syllabus. Uh, it's actually just a random part I happened to be on a few minutes ago. <laughs> so uh, this is section D01B and our lab for me is section L02B. That's on Wednesday. Of course, some of you, the Wednesday stuff doesn't apply to, for instance, if you have the other lab, I think it's L04B. Uh, it meets on Friday. I think that's the only other lab that you could be in. Uh, but either, either way, the total lab hours are supposed to be three. The lecture hours are supposed to be three. It's a four credit hour class. Uh, my office, which is completely irrelevant right now because they're doing everything remotely. So my office is JC24. My phone number is even more useless because that's my office number. And one, it's pretty useless anyways because I never uh, answer it. I only check a voicemail on it. Uh, far as office hours goes, that's just going to be held by on a case to case basis. So whenever you need help, you contact me. If we uh, can't get it done via email, then I'll set up a zoom meeting and we'll deal with it that way. Uh, the canvas site, uh, you know that here's my email address. I got some rules with that though. The main thing is whenever you email me one, don't email me from canvas. Uh, that doesn't for some reason go where it's supposed to all the time. Uh, it also doesn't necessarily allow you to, to do the, uh, uh, subject line like I want it done it's called like if you reply to a message that I send you through canvas or something like that uh, it automatically takes the subject line and uh, sometimes the little window doesn't even allow you to change it so my rules are one email me at wyounger at tcc.edu you must start your subject line with phy space 241 and then inside your email you definitely need your first and last name and I only want you to use your TCC email account, uh, not the not the Canvas one. Okay, I know the Canvas one might be a little easier for you in some ways, but it's uh, it's just a, a nightmare for me because it doesn't come to where it needs to come to and all that other stuff. Uh, that being said, I'm going to try not to use the Canvas email system to email you guys either because that's a royal pain on my side. I'm I'm thinking it. If it's a pain on my side, it might be a pain on yours because I know I have to go in there. I have to choose a course. I have to wait for the window to come open for the course that I want. And then I got to look through all my courses, which you guys have a lot less of those, and then find that one. Then I got to select all. And then I got to select me as well so I can have my own copy. So it's just a nightmare. I'm going to make an alias for this class, and I'm going to email you guys uh, that way. Uh, so try to use your Outlook account and uh, email me that way. But remember... Use your TCC email account. Start the subject line with PHY space 241. Put your first and last name in there and we'll be good. Okay. Basically, I have filters on my email because I get uh, upwards of 200 emails a day and I don't like it. <laughs> so uh, if I don't see a subject line that is one of my students, in other words, uh, one of my classes, then, then I usually don't even pay attention to it. So you can email me for weeks and not get a response and it might be that. Okay. 
sometimes I just lose an email by, I don't know why, I'm just a goober, I guess. So if, if that happens, I apologize, but uh, keep trying to get up with me. I'm getting better every semester at getting back to students within 48 hours, which is my rule. So I should get back to you within 48 hours and you should get back to me within 48 hours. So this course description, it teaches the principles of classical and modern physics, and it includes mechanics, wave phenomena, heat, and special relativity. I'll talk a little bit about general relativity. Uh, you might have noticed from behind me, I'm, relativity is my thing. Uh, that's what I did my PhD work in. I, by the way, you don't have to call me doctor. I'm what they call an ABD PhD. So I uh, finished all the coursework. I did my uh, comprehensive exams and all that good stuff, but I did not complete my dissertation. So I'm a lot farther than it sounds, but I, it, I, that's what I am. So I'm not a doctor. My, my PhD advisor orphaned me and went to Cornell. So I'm a little orphan. Uh, your prerequisites, you know that, uh, Math 263. Uh, this is just the normal generic stuff we have to put in there, the literacy that it covers and all that stuff so that you get a certain number of uh, life skills, if you will, by the time you finished uh, your two years here, you get to a certain level and same thing when you go to four-year institute. Uh, if you go to a four-year institution. So uh, physics for scientists and engineers with modern physics, that's the uh, text we'll use. Uh, it's supposed to come with a little card that gives you access to my lab and mastering. So the my lab and mastering is where, where our homework system is going to be. And that's where you're going to do uh, basically your homeworks. And I, I try to choose uh, uh, this semester, I'm trying to choose a smarter set instead of the ones I've been doing. So I don't have to uh, push so hard for 3000 and what I'm going to do in, instead of pushing so hard for the 3000 I'm going to take that what they call they call it the best of the homeworks by Gian Coley and I will choose those homework sets for the chapters and I will also give you probably a practice test which is something that university and college professors generally do not do so get on my soapbox for a second when a university or college professor takes the time to make up a uh, practice test really really take it because they're like either super nice or they're super horrible and they don't know how to teach so the only way their students can pass is by having a practice test <laughs> okay I hope I'm not that second case but I might be maybe that's why I'm so successful <laughs> but we'll see uh, the main thing is I do give you uh, I, I, when we have an online class I try to get you a test every two chapters sometimes I'll go three uh, just because I've learned that the more frequently you test, the, the more like a bell curve the tests become and the uh, more normal the grades are. The thing with this semester is we're in quarantine. So one of the things I'm asking you to have is a webcam. Looks like m many of you have those. I don't know if the other ones don't have them. Uh, but it would really, 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 really be helpful because what we're going to have to do is I don't because everything's online, I, I, I don't know who's showing up to class to take their test, okay? Or I don't know who's showing up to their computer to take your test. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, you know, we've heard stories of that, uh, of other people doing that, of course, most recently in the news. Uh, so that does happen, and that's something that we, we don't want to do. When, when students go through this course, there's a reason they take this course, and you could really do a lot of damage to a lot of people or to yourself. Uh, if you don't learn this material. So what we try to do is we always want 30 to 40% of the course grade to be something where we know it was you that took it. So in principle, what that means is uh, I would like to have two face-to-face -face tests and split up 15%, 15% or 20 and 20 or whatever I decide to be. Uh, since I can't actually have you uh, come to campus, you know, it, en masse, the better scenario is you have a webcam and we use that webcam with Respondus Lockdown and Respondus Monitor, and uh, they can actually monitor you taking your test. Uh, and they look for, uh, well, they have you know, people that work on it basically, but they're looking for you doing weird things like, you know, looking down like this or doing weird stuff. So uh, just make sure uh, you try to get a webcam. If you can't get one, contact me what we're gonna have to do is we'll probably have to figure out some way for you to go to a particular place and actually have the test uh, proctored by a proctoring company or something like that so uh, that's a whole different ball game you don't want to do it it also costs money usually 
or it might be something where I could, you know, save you money, but have you have to meet me up at school and, and take it in person that way. So hopefully everybody can get a webcam. The cheapest I've seen has been about 15 bucks. So you might be able to do it that way if necessary. So uh, I did put that as things you will need. So you need to test the textbook. You need to modify mastering physics or mastering my lab and mastering whatever they sold you. A set of ruler will be helpful. It's actually extremely helpful now for this online system because we do a lot of stuff where we have to measure things with rulers. Uh, so we need a ruler in centimeter scale, not not an inch scale. It could be both. That's fine, but make sure make sure it has a uh, centimeter scale. You'll need a protractor too. Again, I said it would be helpful, but in reality, it's really really probably pretty necessary. Uh, you'll need pen, pencil, eraser, graph paper. Again, is something that. Uh, that one's probably more on the helpful side because I actually give you some printouts of graph paper. So you could use that in principle, uh, but you, having your own graph paper might be nice. You definitely have to have a scientific calculator. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, in fact, sometimes the fancier ones are more problematic. I got this uh, TI Inspire uh, CX that actually turned out to be kind of a pain in the butt. You got to hit like two buttons to even use a trig function. You got to hit two buttons to use scientific notation. So sometimes the uh, TI-84 or 83 or something like that are even better. So don't, you know, don't feel obligated to go out and buy the most expensive one. Just get you one that has a button that says SIN on it and you, you're, you're fancy enough. Okay. I do personally like the big screens at, to the graphing calculators but that's not necessary. Uh, it, it might help you a little bit in the course and it can even uh, help you solve problems a little better, but it's not necessary. If you're gonna be a engineer or a physicist or a chemist, I'd say maybe this, this might be the time because you can get good deals as a student that you can't get later, but it might be a good deal to buy one uh, in that case. I got two chats I'm missing. Hold on, let's see what's going on. So still about that, and we're gonna need a textbook this week. Uh, so the deal is once you get into mastering, they give you a two week uh, uh, free, uh, free period basically. So you have access to the text immediately, even if you don't have the text yet. Uh, so don't get behind on homeworks. Like the, my homeworks are gonna be due every uh, Sunday night at 11.59 PM. This first week's gonna be the exception though. I'm probably gonna give you to Wednesday uh, at 11.59 PM. Uh, but other than that, I always expect your homeworks to be due at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. And because of the homework system, you'll immediately be able to make up an account. And then you can, uh, if you want to pay for it there, it turns out it's actually a lot cheaper to buy it there than it is to buy it through our bookstore. Uh, they take credit card and all that stuff, just like they do at the bookstore. Uh, but they, they can't do anything with financial aid, I don't think, unless you're financial. I don't know how financial aid works. Just put it that way. <laughs> it's, it's magic. So anyways, yeah, you don't have to have your book right now. Uh, you'll have access to the ebook through that, but you will find uh, access to some book would be extremely helpful, period. So I, I tell my students, if you don't want to actually pay for the book, just buy the package with the ebook. And if you want a physical textbook, find the same book, maybe in the third edition or, or, you know, something like that. And you can find those dirt cheap all day long on Amazon. Uh, they, the, the problem sets change, the numbers don't change. Some of them, the, they erase some problems and get rid of, that's not really of concern to us because our homework is going to be done on the system. Uh, the main thing is the actual text where they teach you stuff and that doesn't change significantly, not hugely from, you know, edition three to edition four. So if you really want a physical text, buy that cheap version and then just get the, the ebook with uh, the system. Also, occasionally uh, when, well, actually all our online tests, I allow you use of your book and all that stuff. Uh, the the two face to ones that would normally be face to face, I don't allow you use of your book. That's why uh, that's why you uh, have to do the respond to stuff. But there's other ones you do, so it would be helpful for you to have a book or an ebook to flip back and forth to. Yes, it's the same book you use for Physics 242. Okay, and y'all may uh, speak. I don't know. Some of y'all might not have speakers. That might be why you're chatting. Uh, but y'all may uh, speak up if you need to. Just you know, say, "Hey, Mr. Younger," and, and uh, unmute yourself and say, "Hey, Mr. Younger." Jamie, do you have one? Hello. Hello. How are you? Did I you have a question, Jamie? Speaker. I just what? didn't use it because I was listening. Oh, and gotcha. I didn't no, want to interrupt. No problem. Yeah, y'all can y'all can interrupt me. Uh, you know, as long as it's topic related as opposed to just random things. Oh, squirrel. 
It's like, as long as you're not doing anything like that, you'll be good. <laughs> Look, cloud. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, so this is a textbook. This is the stuff you need. Like I said, do try to get that. All this stuff is, is stuff we have to put in the syllabus. That's why the syllabus is so long. Uh, it will be posted on uh, there later today, but I got to make some tweaks to it first. Notice this is that homework point. I was telling you about 187.5 points per week. That would get you a perfect 100 in my old system. But like I said, I'm probably going to change the system. We're just going to have a percentage score that you get for your homeworks. And if you got that percentage, uh, that's the homework grade you're going to get. Okay. Uh, I will have an opportunity for you to have two, what I call face-to-face -face, or at least proctored type exams. Uh, those are going to be weighted heavily. So like I said, at least 30% for the two of them. So 15 and 15, but maybe as high as 20 and 20. Okay. That's just so we can uh, keep you honest, make sure everybody's doing the work that they need to do. Uh, and it's not, you know, your, your friend who happens to be an astrophysicist at Cornell. Okay. <laughs> Taking your test for you. Uh, what else done here? This is a tentative schedule. And this is actually for the dates back in 2019. So these dates are going to change as well. I haven't changed them yet. But you can see, uh, basically, we're going to have, uh, Oh, I didn't even put any specifics in here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what I used to do is I just, every week you're gonna have a module in Canvas and it'll say week one, this date to this date and everything's due at 11.59 p.m. on that last date. Uh, again, this first week's gonna be different, but basically we cover around a chapter a week, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little less, but I will have this much more in detail. I remember at the last minute I was given this course uh, the last time I offered it and I just had to throw something together. So that's why it's so uh, non-committal. <laughs> but yeah, we try to do a test every two weeks. That helps too. So uh, that's our big plan. Sometimes that first test might happen a week later, but we'll see. Uh, this schedule is always tentative anyways. So uh, we'll see uh, how that goes. I'll correct all these dates for you. I think that's about it. As far as a uh, attendance goes, I don't use attendance too much. I, I just use it because I have to turn in certain things for certain uh, departments here at the school. But uh, if I ever did use it, it'd be more along the lines of, hey, this student is you know half a point shy of getting that A that they wanted. Uh, how often did they attend? And, and what about those practice tests that, that you made for them? Did they, did they take those and they take them seriously? And sometimes I'll look up and a, a single student might have taken the practice test 20 times before each test. So like test one, practice test one, they'll have taken it 20 times and scored, you know, all 70s and 80s, which you can't just do by randomly doing it, right? Uh, or randomly answering it. Because they're normally like 10 questions long or something like that. So it's be really short. Uh, that student would clearly get that half a point from me if they needed it. Uh, but I don't use it the other way. I never use it negatively. So that's all I, I do for as uh, far as practice test grades go, as well as far as attendance goes. Uh, if, if the system lets me, I usually give you a, a basically like up to three days late, but I got to see if mastering allows me to do that. I usually allow it, you know, one day late, you're going to lose 5%, two days late, you're going to lose 10%, three days late, you're going to use 15%. And uh, that's as much as you get. So. I don't want you guys getting behind on homework. There's no way to succeed in physics without doing copious amounts of problems. Okay. I would not want to give y'all homework at all for any grade whatsoever. If I had my brothers, in fact, that's the way it was done with us. We never got to turn in homework for grades. Uh, but we've discovered that students nowadays just don't do it if you don't assign it. And then they all get zeros on their tests or twenties and eights and twelves. So we've evidently got to give y'all a carrot. So <laughs> So that's why you guys get a homework system where there's grading. Uh, I don't want y'all walking in my classroom, speaking all loud and using obscene language. That's what that says, but I never have a problem with that. I'm sure you guys are going to be awesome. Uh, electronic policy devices. So during a test, uh, a simple online test, I don't care. The sky's the limit, man. You can use your phone. You're just not allowed to use other people. Okay. So like when I post a practice test, or excuse me, when I post an online test, I'll say, uh, you can use the internet, you can use Google searches, you can use any books you want, you can use your notes, 
The only thing you can't use is another person via text, real time, or any website that's been created since this test was posted. In other words, you can't get your friend to bypass the rules by uh, taking the test and then writing up a web page to help you with the test, and then you go to that web page. So that that's basically how the rules are on online tests. And guess what? Students score on average like a 92 on the online test. And then I give them the midterm, which is with respondents and one student had a 98 average and got a four on the midterm so that's what i'm trying to get you guys to avoid uh i want you to make good grades so i give you the option to do all these things but i really intend you to maybe use it if there's one question you don't really understand but if you find it's more than that that you're having to get help with then you're probably doing it doing the studying wrong okay uh it is one of those things physics is, especially if you've never had this before, it's something where I'll get up and I'll tell you how to do this and I do that and you're like, wow, that's really easy. And then you sit down and you try to work a problem, you can't do a problem. Okay, that's an indicator that it's not as easy as you think, it's just easily explained and you didn't understand all the steps and it's a multi-step process and you gotta figure that out. And the only way you're gonna get used to that is solving a bunch of problems. So uh, please, please, please take it seriously. Assume, uh, assume that you're gonna get an F until the last day <laughs> so that you can work really hard and keep doing as many homework problems as possible. So the electronic device policy is basically there's no electronic device policy on the online test. Uh, I can't tell what you're doing when we're having Zoom meetings. As long as you're not disruptive, I'm okay. I even caught one student having a glass of wine <laughs> during my class, which I was like, well, I would be too, <laughs> but they don't let me. So anyways, uh, <laughs> One of the electronic policies would be if you're taking that one of those uh, respondents tests, you can't be having your phone around there. Okay, no phones, no iPads. The only thing you're allowed to use is uh, a blank sheet of paper or equation sheet that I give you or equation sheet that I approve of, a uh, calculator, a scientific calculator that's not your phone, a pen, pencil, eraser, and uh, maybe rulers if you want that and protractors. Okay. I've caught a lot of students cheating, so there's some really harsh language in here. You can see I'm a real toughy, and you're going to have access to this. I apologize for making you try to read that on this. Here, I'll make it bigger. Ooh, ooh, no, awesome technology. There you go. Now it might be a little easier to read. It looks like some people are trying to read it. So, uh, inclement weather, you're going to get warnings and stuff like that. It's not a big deal with us because we're not coming into class. Uh, but there might be times where the internet goes down. Whenever the internet goes down for like a Zoom meeting, I'm going to try to email you guys if I can. Uh, I have an iPhone, so I can at least use my bandwidth for that. But uh, so I should be able to get an email out to you. And I'll try to do that as early as possible. Uh, so just keep an eye out on your email, especially if you're rushing home to, to catch this Zoom meeting. And, uh, you know, you're maybe in a dangerous situation because it's a bad storm or snow or something like that. Uh, check your email uh, an hour or so before class just to make sure you're not going to, you know, risk life and limb to get there for a meeting that's not happening. Oh, good old blackberries. I think the White House is the only thing that uses those anymore. And uh, they don't even, uh, Trump doesn't even use that. So who knows? Uh, they, they actually banned iPhones uh, in the White House because uh, it's a security breach, basically, because it has a camera built in it. So that's why they had them using blackberries. But uh, anyways, some people chose not to. Uh, yeah, I think this is all valid still, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is my grading system. You'll notice it's basically the 9.5 system. So it's a, a 10 point scale. Uh, and as long as you get an 89.5 or higher, you're gonna get an A. Uh, below that, but 79.5 or higher, you get a B. But notice that the C, I give you a little bit extra, okay? Because I know sometimes it's really hard to just get through this class and maybe you wanna be a veterinarian or a medical doctor. And this isn't that critical of a course to your future understanding. It's a critical to your course of study in that they don't want doctors who can't succeed in a course like this. So I give you a little bit of a break. I allow you to get as low as 68.5 for a C, uh, which means it still transfers are as low as a 58.5 for a D. That, that allows you to get a degree at TCC, but it does not transfer to a four-year institution. So if you go to a four-year school, they're gonna make you retake it, okay? So you don't wanna get that D, okay? Actually, all y'all want to get that A, and that's what we're gonna try to get you to do, okay? 
you can do it. Uh, every student can do it. And I hope you all do. And I'm not one of those people that are going to force a certain number of A's, B's and C's. Uh, whatever you get, you get. Okay. So the way I did this in the past was a proctored final and this sort of stuff. So all this is going to change. So don't even pay any attention to this yet. I do normally drop the lowest uh, online test grade, but not the two face-to-face -to -face tests. I have two, so it's not so detrimental. And I have one, you know, sort of midterm specifically. So you learn early instead of just facing that off in the final. I actually had a course in grad school, a uh, solid state physics class. It's a graduate level physics class. And literally our only grade was the final exam. I'm like, sphincter check, you know, it's really bad. <laughs> so I don't want to do that to my students. That's why I give you a midterm and a, a final. Yep, I just said the word sphincter on a Zoom. That's awesome. All right. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, ignore the, the words proctored. That, that was from, like I said, how I was doing it before. Uh, I think this has pretty much got it. I used to allow students to do book reports for an extra uh, couple points on their final, for instance. Uh, I might offer that this semester. I'm going to rework this uh, this uh, actual syllabus after I get off of here, and uh, I'll decide that then. I would normally have the syllabus done. Uh, the problem is this uh, this morning, I discovered that something I did last night, uh, I'm now the department chair, so I was filling everybody's classes in with all their labs so they don't have to do that uh, themselves, uh, mainly because most of them didn't know how because most of them are adjuncts uh, and hadn't worked here before. So I was filling all them in and something I did made one of my classes disappear and that was the class where <laughs> where I had my syllabus and everything. So uh, I discovered that this morning that all that stuff had disappeared. So I didn't have my syllabus, uh, but there's always something every semester. So uh, I, I would like to say that this never happens, but uh, I think I know at least one student in here uh, that's had me before and he knows it's probably what happens to me every semester for some reason or other. So let me stop sharing the screen and come back here. So that was basically our syllabus. Uh, what you guys are trying to uh, work on uh, for this chapter one is basically a few things. We're going to, uh, you need to talk about the scientific method, understand what, what that is, and there is no the scientific method with the step by step by step. Uh, I, I usually look at the scientific method quite differently. Uh, in fact, we got a few minutes, so I'm going to give you a little rundown on what that is. I'm going to switch over to my document cam. And what I see the scientific method as is you make an observation. Now in astronomy, this would literally be an observation. In physics, it could be an observation. Hey, the, you know, when the little kid drops a ball, it falls and it, I can't tell if it speeds up or not or whatever. And then from that, you uh, sort of come up with a hypothesis. Okay, and then that hypothesis, which often has uh, is sort of a, a model, if you will, you'll have like, you know, maybe you're modeling that a kid is throwing a ball and that it appears when the kid throws the ball with a straight arm directly overhead, it looks like the ball fills out the arc of a circle. So like a quarter of a circle. So that could be a hypothesis that could literally be a model. And then you say, okay, well, if that's the case, then the ball should land exactly as far away from, uh, from the center line of his body as it is from the base of his foot to the top of his hand, okay? So then you, using that hypothesis, you have now made a prediction. Now you take that prediction and observe whether it's right or wrong, okay? True or false, that's it, okay? That is the scientific method. And you go through that over and over and over and over and over again. And if it's never, ever, ever found wrong, or if you've made enough corrections where you've got this coherent system where you can consistently get the answer right and it's gone through this hundreds of thousands of times, then this hypothesis moves from a hypothesis to a, a full-blown theory, okay? 
or we often use the word natural law or law or something like that. That's got some historical connotations that mean different things. Uh, but just be advised that a theory is about as strong a word as you can have. Uh, there's really nothing any stronger than that. And uh, as Einstein said, uh, no amount of experiments you can do will prove me right. And it only takes one experiment to prove me wrong. And that's the case forever. Okay. So Einstein's special theory of relativity is probably the single most tested theory in the history of mankind. Literally, they test it uh, on the order of hundreds of thousands of times per second when an accelerator is running. And the accelerators often run for months on end. So yeah, it's never, ever, ever been violated. So that's a pretty amazing thing. But you just keep going around in the circle. Okay. The main thing is your hypothesis and predictions have to make a falsifiable prediction. Okay. If it's not falsifiable, it's, it might be valid. It's just not science. So uh, you, you can't use non-falsifiable hypothesis. Uh, so one of the things that we do in conceptual physics is we'll say, I'll give a list of, of things and ask which one is a, a real scientific hypothesis. And one might be, uh, there are things in this universe that we'll never know about. Uh, there are places in this universe that uh, are nothing like what we've seen now are the, uh, the moon is made of cheese. Are any of those a scientific hypothesis? You can add another if you want. There's a dragon in my uh, basement and good job, Jacob. Uh, there's a dragon in my basement only he's invisible, he flies, and his body's immiscible so that you could, you know, uh, smoke and stuff like that uh, goes right through him. He's also perfectly silent and has no smell. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the only, <laughs> what, uh, the only thing that is a scientific hypothesis is, in fact, the moon is made of cheese. Isn't that weird? It's obviously wrong, but that's the point is you can, you can test that. You can go to the moon or you can do experiments to figure out what its density is. And if its density ain't that of cheese, you know it ain't cheese, right? So uh, that's what a falsifiable hypothesis is. So that's the key point about what I'd call the scientific method. Another thing that's sort of important now is making measurements. Someone asked me a question in chat. Let me check this out real quick. I saw something about number five. <laughs> the student asks, what are you, five? <laughs> yes, sort of. <laughs> it's, it gives me my life force. I'm, I'm uh, a perpetual third grader. So yeah, y'all enjoy that or let it annoy you as you wish. <laughs> All right. So the next thing is uh, in science and, and in, in reality, every number that's measured is uncertain. Every number has a certain uncertainty. So for instance, if I go to uh, use this device, notice this is actually a good measuring device because the zero is not at the end. When the zero is actually at the end, that could cause problems because the end could be all mangled and that would give you a little bit of error. But when I go to measure it, I line up the thing on the zero. If I was using one of those ones that didn't have the N uh, or that did have the N being zero, maybe I'd measure it from the one spot instead. But here we get to measure it from the zero spot and I'm trying to line that up. One of the key things is I try to look perpendicular perfectly so I don't get any parallax. Because if I look from this side, I'll get one measurement. If I look from this side, I'll get another measurement. You've probably seen this before. If you're leaning over in the center console of your car and you look at your fuel gauge, all of a sudden the fuel gauge looks more full than it is. If you lean towards the passenger side window, your fuel gauge looks kind of empty, right? That's called parallax and you want to get rid of that parallax. So they sell, for instance, devices like uh, voltmeters with mirrored scales. So it'll have the, the needle that you're supposed to read from and then a reflection of the needle that you're supposed to read from. When those two line up, you know you've got, you're looking perpendicular. So that's something you got to do. Well, there's also another problem in that when you go to measure, you need to use the device to its fullest. So this device has 10 spaces between zero and one. So when you grab a measuring device, the first thing you want to do is find out where the zero is. 
The second thing you want to do is find out how many divisions there are in a single unit. So uh, this single unit from zero to one or another one from like four to five. If I count the spaces, which is what you're supposed to count, I see there's 10 in there. So each of these is a 10th. Then I also check, well, what is this measurement? Well, on this meter, on this ruler, it says centimeters. So I know this is one centimeter. Notice a centimeter is about as wet, wide as your fingernail. I use that as a rule of thumb. The meter is about as high as a doorknob. Uh, the centimeter is about the width of a fingernail. And the millimeter is about the thickness of a fingernail. So you can get a lot of stuff like that. Or it's also the width of a, of a staple for the centimeter. That's another scale. But when you read this device, uh, you actually have a precision down to one decimal place in centimeters. Because uh, since these are a tenth, then this first line to the right of the zero is 0.1, one tenth, then 0.2, which is two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, and then the long one is five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and then one. So you know that each of those are tenths, but you can also, when you're reading this device, uh, you can tell like this thing right now, when I actually look over it, it's harder for you guys because y'all aren't necessarily lined up. Let me do it from the four to four to the whatever. Okay, so it's more into your camera. So now I've got it, uh, the left hand edge on four. And really, once you've got that lined up, it's more important that you're directly over this, which y'all appear to be. So this appears to be one, two, two and a half, but it's definitely past two and a half. Okay, so I'd say 2.5 something. Now I can tell the difference between 2.51 and 2.59. So I should really take another digit and put it on here. In fact, whenever you're measuring with a meter stick or a triple beam balance, anything that has a scale like this, you always go one digit beyond the marks, okay? Then you try to estimate what your uncertainty is. Like here, I told you, I definitely can tell the difference between uh, 20, uh, 2.51 and 2.59, but I might not be able to tell the difference between 2.51 and 2.52. I'd probably even have a hard time between 2.52 and 2.55. So maybe the uncertainty is a whole 0.1. So that's what you're always going to assume, by the way, is at least 0.1 or a one in the last decimal place is the uncertainty. Uh, in this case, that's what I'm going to say it is as well, but sometimes it might be more. So if they specify it, you know it's more because they gave it to you, uh, or you'll know what it is anyways. And if they don't specify it, you have to assume one in that last digit. So even if you think, well, wait a second, what if I took a really sharp marker and marked 10 marks in between each of, one of, each of these pair, and then I took a really sharp one and did 10 in each side of those, well, you might think you could get an infinite number of decimal places, but the smaller you got, you'd realize this surface is no longer smooth at the microscopic level. It's actually gonna have bumps and stuff like that. And what's worse, if you get, keep getting smaller, you're gonna actually run into atoms and molecules and they're bubbling in and out. So sometimes the atom or molecule of this binder clip might be a way to poop over here, right? So you're never gonna get a completely perfect measurement. You're always gonna have uncertainty and that uncertainty is gonna be at least one in the last decimal place. So in this case, I would record this number as what looks to me is 2.53 centimeters. And by writing that, I understand that means plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeters. So this is the way you'd actually express a number. You should actually include this if it's other than one in this last digit. And actually, in, in any lab situation, you should always express this uh, because sometimes that number is not going to be one, right? But in everyday life, we write a number like this. That just means it's uncertain in this digit, and it has to be at least a difference of one in that last digit. So you're not sure if that's really 2.52 or 2.54 or 2.53. That's what this means. Does that make sense to everyone? So uh, that's uh, one issue with measurement. Another issue with measurement is sometimes uh, it's just not that easy to do. So like right here, I want to measure this from the four again. This is an old school iPad charging block. So I've got it lined up really good with the four right now, but as you can see, it's really hard to tell 
because I got to make this jump from all the way over here where it's smooth across this, it's sort of hard to line up. So in that case, uh, maybe I'd call it, uh, this case looks like one, two, three, four, 4.4, 4, 5. So maybe I call this one 4.45. But in this case, because of that estimating I had to do, maybe I'd say this is plus or minus 0 0.02 centimeters or maybe even 0 0.03, okay? So that just comes from the nature of the measurement, the nature of how hard it is to measure, uh, stuff like that, okay? Now, when you have those numbers, you've got another problem as well. And that other problem is uh, I take this number and I take this number, maybe I'm supposed to multiply them, maybe I'm supposed to divide them. What happens to the result? Well, that's what uh, scientific notation and uh, more specifically sig figs help us with. So if you look in our Canvas course, you'll see I have a link, and it's also on my YouTube channel, uh, which I think I sent you a, a link to as well. But it's also on a YouTube channel, uh, and it's it's called Uncertainty and Measurement, and that gets you through the first basics of uh, how to measure, uh, also how to record uncertainty, uh, how to use sig figs, that sort of thing. So that's uh, a good ch chunk of what this chapter is about. I'm going to put up two or three more videos before our next meeting. And each time I do, I'll let you guys know that it's up. But if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll know as soon as it hits it, because it, it lets you know. You don't have to, but I'm just saying I, I'm going to put it there as well. Uh, so feel free to uh, check it out there. But the more of that that you do, the less time we spend, quote unquote, lecturing in our Zoom meeting. And that'll be more time for you to ask me questions, for me to help you solve a problem, or me to solve problems for you. OK? Well, class is done. It's two. It's ten fifty, or excuse me, eleven fifty. So that means you guys are free to go. Uh, I will email you when the uh, syllabus has been updated, and I will email you when more videos come available. Uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, everyone's free to go, but I will wait till the last person leaves in case anybody has any questions. Enjoy meeting you. Oh, don't forget, everybody's supposed to send me a chat of their just their name uh, real quick before you leave. So, did you have a question, Emma, or anybody, or Jacob? Looks like everybody's doing cool. Nope, I'm all good. Have a good day. You too. I am fine. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Appreciate it. See you Wednesday. See you then. Have See a good you one. Wednesday. Thank okay. you. I'm good. See you Wednesday. Okay. You had a question, Jennifer? Yeah, I just real quick. I just want to double check something. So the lab, I have lab with you on Wednesday. It's virtual. You don't have to go into TCC. This the the J building J building at all. We just do it on Zoom that as well. Yes, that's true. Yep, okay. everything's virtual. Like I said, some of them we we video some of the labs and then I give you the data. Other ones we're going to use simulation software. And I already have the lab manual for that too, probably. I already have that. Yeah, we use some of the ma manual experiments, plus we also uh, add addendums to them so that you can see other stuff. Okay. Okay, have a good one. You as well. Anybody else have a question? Jacob? I think you're muted, Jacob. I know you're not. Might be a speaker. Still not hearing you. I'll check the chat in case somebody's trying to communicate with me that way. How about John Mitchell? You have a question? Uh, yeah. Are you um, it, on the required uh, course text? Are you planning to change any of that, or will that be the same? No, all that'll stay the same. Yeah. The, uh, right. If you go once, I have a homework assignment. If you click on that, they'll give you an option to buy it immediately right there if you want, and that's usually a little cheaper than the bookstore. Or you can just go by what the bookstore has, and that's fine as well. Um, okay. So it's the uh, it's the link under the textbook requirements, right? Yep. All right. I've got the chat open if anybody's trying to communicate with me that way because your speaker's not working or whatever. Uh, I saw John talking, but uh, or Jacob talking, but I didn't hear anything. Uh, John, did you have a question or Jacob, do you have a question? Okay, I got Jacob's now. Mike's not working, but just rehashing my earlier question, are we going to need a textbook for the first or second week? Uh, 
you don't have to physically have it because you'll have a free access to the ebook. Uh, Barnes and Noble or Amazon or wherever you want to buy it from is fine and it, it might take a little while, but you'll have access to the ebook immediately. I would, I would recommend just as soon as the first homework assignment is posted, you click on that and they'll offer you a chance to buy it then. And you won't have the physical textbook, but you'll have the ebook immediately. And that's the cheapest route. So you could, and if you want to really go even cheaper, uh, but you still want a, a textbook, actual hard copy or whatever, just order a previous edition and you'll get a lot better deal. Anyone else? Maria? How about John? You want to type something if your mic's not working? Uh, Mr. Younger, I had a question. Okay. Um, it, I originally signed up for the lab on Fridays. Um, and it was before they announced that we were going to do all online. Right. Um, and I have a, another class that's scheduled for the on Wednesday afternoons, but he do, he isn't doing any Zoom meetings or anything like that. He's just posting notes online and we can do them at our leisure or whatever. Um, so do you know if I could possibly switch from the Friday lab to the Wednesday lab, or does that go against any kind of policy? No, it should be, it should be okay. Uh, I, I will check. I might have too many, so my dean won't let me add another, but I might be able to work a deal with the other instructor or whatever and just have you attend mine, and uh, I keep track of everything. So That would be awesome, yeah. I'll see. It might just be something where you just need to cross over, but I'll check around to see. All right. I would really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. No problem. What is this David? Yes, sir. David Fletcher. Okay. And you did, uh, email, or you did chat that your, uh, your name. So I know you're here, right? Yes, sir. I sent it to you in a private message. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Emily said they were just here to, yeah, gotcha. And, uh, John, you didn't have anything and Maria, is Maria the same as Emily? Oh, there she is. Where can I find this? Uh, the syllabus, it, I didn't put it up yet because I'm still fixing it. So Maria is asking that. Uh, I I will probably put it up within the next hour or so. And when I do, I'll email you and let, let you know it's there. Okay. All right, folks. Well, you have a good day and uh, I'll go ahead and kill it now.